murder, but investigators reportedly believe he could shed some light on the investigation and Hernandez's possible role in a gun trafficking operation. Hernandez is charged, of course, with first-degree murder and the death of Odin Lloyd. He and Pouncey played college football together at the University of Florida, and according to the Florida Sentinel, Pouncey is expected to return to the team in time for Sunday's game against the Patriots. All right, here to talk about this with us is Sports Illustrated writer and UNH law professor Michael McCann, live in Concord, New Hampshire. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Maria, for having me. It, it looks like this gun trafficking angle, and we've talked about it before, it looks like it's really starting to gain some momentum here. What do you know? That's right, Maria. It appears that the gun trafficking aspect of the Hernandez case is taking on greater significance. Now, that could be because perhaps the murder case isn't going as well, but it also appears that evidence is mounting, at least a suspicion of evidence, that Hernandez has been connected to the sale of guns, and Mike Pouncey, Hernandez's former teammate at the University of Florida, may have information about that. We don't know what information he could have. We also don't know some things about him testifying before a grand jury. For instance, was he given immunity that allowed him to speak freely without worrying about being charged? Was he also told to bring information, bank records, emails, other aspects that could go to financial transactions? There's a lot we don't know, but they certainly paint the portrait of a widening case rather rather than one that's shrinking. Michael, tell us, maybe we should go back a bit. Tell us more about the relationship between Aaron Hernandez and really the Pouncey brothers, am I correct? Yeah, that's right, Mark. They played together in college. They are reportedly friends. We know that the Pouncey brothers wore the free Hernandez uh, apparel after Hernandez was charged. That, of course, led to much criticism. Why were they saying free Hernandez when he's been charged with murder? Certainly not a, a sign of good judgment, but it does appear they are friends, they're close. The closeness of that relationship, their proximity, we don't know the exact details of it, but they are players that have been connected together in the past, and it's possible, though we don't know, to be fair, they could be connected beyond playing in college, and it appears that Pouncey may have information related to the sale of guns implicating Hernandez, but again, Grand juries are done in private. Right. And we don't have access to that information. And we may not know it. And I was just going to say that as well, that this is uh, private information, that we do not know this information. However, it does appear that this is uh, much larger uh, um, than, than perhaps we originally thought, that it could potentially be. That's right, Maria. And I think that has to be very concerning for the NFL. This is not just mer merely a case about Aaron Hernandez and a murder investigation. It could be broader than that. It could involve multiple players who were involved potentially with some type of unlawful conduct that are connected to Hernandez. Now, again, we're, we're leaping to, to points that we don't know to be true yet, but it has to be worrisome for the NFL that another NFL player appears to have testified before a grand jury that's looking into Aaron Hernandez. Just the very fact that there's a grand jury involved, I would think that Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the National Football League, as you said, trying to put out fires. I mean, first you had Aaron Hernandez to begin with and the charges he's now facing. You also had the bullying aspect uh, that took place with the Miami Dolphins players. Uh, but now you have this coming to light, uh, as you mentioned, you know, the National Football League, for a time, you know, was the sport in America as far as, you know, hey, look at our teams, look at the amount of attendance we have at our stadiums, look at what we have for television ratings. But now, I'll tell you, the last year uh, has brought them into the spotlight in not a good way. That's right, Mark. It's been a very rough past year or so for the NFL. Of course, the concussion case involving over 4,000 retired players and their families. There's a proposed settlement, although interestingly there, a number of other players are now suing the NFL, retired players, over concussions. That could jeopardize the proposed settlement. This has not been a good stretch for the NFL, to be sure. And let me just ask you real quick, getting back to Pouncey, he's supposed to play against the Patriots this weekend. We know that. Uh, so, again, because we don't know what transcribed in the, what transpired, I should say, in the grand jury testimony, uh, it's likely he's going to play this weekend, and so far no charges have been brought. Any chance charges could be forthcoming down the road? Mark, it's possible, although everything we're hearing is that he's not considered in any way to have engaged in, in conduct that was unlawful. He made no information about Hernandez and unlawful conduct, but we haven't yet heard that Pouncey himself. But, you know, we don't know what he was, what, what, what type of uh, rules were in place when he testified. 
whether he was given immunity would be a sign that he's not the focus. They really want to get Hernandez, and they would tell him, in essence, don't worry about being charged. But interestingly, Mark, if he was given immunity, that would prevent him from pleading the Fifth Amendment. So he would have to answer questions about Hernandez that he may not want to answer. And soon enough, we'll know this will all come out in the wash. And, but what we do know for sure is that Hernandez is also being investigated for a, a double homicide in Boston back in 2012, that perhaps he has a connection there. We actually interviewed somebody who was in one of the cars right. who points the finger at Aaron Hernandez um, as the trigger man. And when we start investigating here at Fox, all of these layers to this story, it, it just is so thick thick, Michael, that it, it's it's a little overwhelming when you see the scope of all of this and all the players involved. It, it's incredible. You know, it, it, Maria, it is incredible. And, and I remember Ted Daniel's report on that. Uh, the, you know, we the show Breaking Bad involved a teacher who was involved in the sale of meth. I mean, it, it seemed like a, an incredible story. Mm -hmm. But in a way, this has some of that aspects to it. Where, right, I know what you mean. Oh my God, how could... How, how could this happen? How could an NFL player be involved potentially with maybe one murder, maybe more than that, maybe the sale of guns? Again, all of this is we don't know for sure. But if it's true, if it turns out to be accurate, what a story. If somebody had scripted it, nobody would believe it. You wouldn't believe it. I mean, here is this this player with a $40 million contract. He's got the big money. I mean, he just hit pay dirt on it. Too. Unbelievable. He has a, a baby, a brand new baby. He has a fiance. I mean, the kid is super talented. And then you see a flip side. And now he is a defendant in, in at least one murder case right now. Like you said, you can't, you can't even script this. And how could it have... And in a way, we have to ask, how could he have gotten away with it if it proves to be true? How could it have happened for years, potentially, this type mm -hmm. of action, without others knowing about it? I think there are some hard questions ahead. Absolutely. We're going to have to leave it at that, but we appreciate your insight, as always. Uh, Sports Illustrated writer and UNH law professor Michael McCann, great talk to you. I'm sure we'll talk with you again down the road as this story continues to develop and evolve. Thanks, Michael. We appreciate it.